No, not with this. That's way too good. Hey, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, just welcome. My name's Gavin Parsons, and today I'm going to test a theory. Can I develop black and white negatives with coffee? Not this coffee though, this is Dorset Coffee Co's Kenyan Blue Mountain and it's way too good for uh, developing film. However, what you're going to need is this stuff. This is cheap instant coffee. It's the cheapest you can buy, it's mellow, it's tasteless, it's absolutely foul, but it's great for developing film so I'm told. You don't want anything that says rich roast or dark roast or basically anything that's got a bit of flavour to it. It's the acids and chemicals that make this coffee look and taste a bit like coffee, uh, which when combined with some other household ingredients gives you the caffeinol developer effect. So what else are we going to do? Let's have a look. We're also going to use some soda crystals uh, or washing soda and you can get this in various different guises but I'll run through that in a minute. They're the two most normal household ingredients. Other things are ionised salt for the bromide in it and ascorbic acid or vitamin C powder, which is exactly the same thing. Other things you're gonna need. Obviously a roll of exposed film. Now this is 120 film from a medium format camera, but 35 millimeter works just as well. You're gonna need a film developing tank. Probably a film developing bag, unless you have a very dark room in your house. You're going to need some jugs. You're also going to need access to a water supply. And then lastly, you're going to need a film fixer. Now I've got a Technol Superfix Plus here. The other thing you're going to need is this. This is the Caffeinol Cookbook and Bible. It gives you all the information you will need to develop with Caffeinol. It's got explanation of all the ingredients, it's got recipes, it's got problem solving, basically it's got everything you need and I'll put a link for you to download the PDF in the description box below. So grab that, make sure you can get hold of all the ingredients, get yourself some film, whack it through a camera. I'm going to use 120 film, you can use 35mm film, doesn't really matter as long as it's black and white. Uh, I've gone for the Ilford HP5 because that's what I use in my 100 year old camera. I'll just add the link to that film if you want to see how I expose this roll of film. Bit of an interesting little film that. So basically what I've got to do is get this inside this. How do we do that? We use this. Okay, so first things first is to get the film into the developing tank. Now if you haven't seen one of these before, Basically, it's got a, a light proof you need to take the cap off, and it's got this ingenious little light, through, light proof um, lid which allows you to put liquid in there and take liquid out without actually exposing the film to light, which you don't need. Inside, it's got a, a holder for the film holder. Now, these things come apart, and you can use them for, if I can get it in the right order, a 35mm or 120 medium format okay so basically I need to put that, that and that together into the dark bag Get the coffee out of the way the dark bag is just a light proof bag with two zips Stop any light getting in. Put the film in and put the film frame in. Do it up. Now this one's quite old and the elastic's gone in the sleeve so I just use elastic bands. Now a little tip is to roll your sleeves down because you want as much in the way of the light as you possibly can. Now this is the tricky part because you can't actually watch what's going on. If you want me to do a video where I show you just how to load these things up, I'm quite happy to do that. It will just mean sacrificing a, a film. So I'll just load this up and then I'll see you on the other side. Okay, that's all in there, as you can hear. Now one thing I will say is if you've never used one of these before, make sure you get a 
film that you're quite happy to sacrifice, be it 35 millimeter or 120, and just practice. Practice putting it on, practice loading it in the dark bag, because when you actually come to a film that you really want to keep, and you mess it up, there's nothing more frustrating. And then you're fiddling around in that bag, your hands are getting sweaty, the film's getting stuck, and then it all goes to ruin. So have as much practice as you can with one of these. So that's now ready to go. So all we need to do is mix up the chemicals. Now it's better to mix these up and use them straight away. Now a couple of things that I find useful when mixing the chemicals is a thermometer. Now when it comes to film developing, temperature is key. There's a Goldilocks temperature which is 20 degrees C. You can adjust either side of that but 20 degrees C is the key temperature to have. If you live in a hot country you're going to have to adjust the time down. If you live in a cold country where you find getting the developer at the right temperature is quite difficult and keeping it there then you might have to increase the time. But 20 degrees is the key temperature so what I tend to do is mix up some water and get it to just above 20 degrees because I live in quite a cool country, I live in the UK. So I mix up slightly higher than 20 degrees and by the time I've got it all mixed up together it's just at the right temperature and then I can get going. The other thing is a set of digital scales. These are again just standard kitchen scales that you can, you can buy and I find this quite good to use because a lot of the weights and measures are in grams and I like to follow the recipe as much as I possibly can. So, kitchen scales, thermometer, just going to go and get some water. And this water is just under 23 degrees, which is perfect. So, once I've mixed it all up, that temperature should start to drop down. And by the time I actually get to the developing stage, it should be about 20 degrees and we can get going from there. But that is a good temperature. And I need to keep checking the temperature as I mix the chemicals together because it, if I get too low then I need to just build that temperature up. So when you look in the Caffanol cookbook you'll see various recipes. There's a Caffanol CM, a Caffanol CH and a Caffanol CL. Now they're designed for different film speeds and different looks and feels to the film. Now I tend to use the CH which is the middle one in, on the screen there, just because that's the one I've always used and it uh, seems to work for me. It's a general purpose mix that allows you to get normal looking negatives. So, the recipe says I need 54 grams of washing soda, 16 grams of vitamin C, one gram of potassium bromide, and 40 grams of instant coffee. However, that's per litre. Now I'm making for this tank is a 500 milliliter tank, so I need to make half that. So everything's divided by half. But I have soda crystals and not soda powder. This has got moisture and other bits in it, so I need to add more. Now, according to the Caffanol cookbook, I need to add 2.7 times the amount that the recipe says. So 54 grams, because this is the washing soda, Divide that by 2, which is 27, and then multiply that by 2.7. I need 72.9 grams of washing soda in my mix. Now I mix my coffee and washing soda separately. So that one is washing soda. And then coffee <coughs> oh my god who drinks this stuff I'm glad you do but <coughs> so we want 20 grams of coffee then the ascorbic acid goes into the washing soda Eight grams of this. That goes into there, and then get our water, and we fill this to then we just want to mix that up. 
And because I've used quite a lot of washing soda here, I need to give it a good mix. We'll let that sit for a little while and then we'll mix up the coffee. Good mix and then with the with the bromide because it's so, such a small amount I'm just gonna give it a quick that'll be fine okay so we've got the two chemicals there I'll just pour the coffee and the washing soda is now together. Just give that a good mix. Oof. Not a good smell. So once the two have mixed together, then you want to let it sit for another couple of minutes just to get all the air bubbles out and make sure all the, the chemicals are mixed together. So you get this nice sort of smooth consistency. We then check the temperature again and we've just 20 and a half degrees, which is perfect. For caffeinol CH, I need to have the developer in over the film for 15 minutes. So in goes the developer. It goes on and make sure it goes on firmly, otherwise you're gonna spray this rather nasty coffee mixer everywhere. Start the time and then agitate for 30 seconds. And as you'll notice, I twist the tank every time it goes back and forth, I twist the tank a quarter of a turn. <coughs> So we do that for 30 seconds, and then once the 30 seconds is up, you just want to set it down and give it a couple of taps to get rid of any air bubbles. Just coming up for the 30 seconds, and that releases air bubbles. Throughout the 15 minutes, every 30 seconds, you need to agitate three times, turning a quarter of a time, and then tap it down two times. I'll do one, two, three. I'm not gonna let you sit here for the full 15 minutes watching me do this, because it's quite dull. So I'll come back as the last inversion takes place, and then I'll show you the rest of the process. The fixer's made up of one part fixer and four parts water. So we need 100 mil of fixer with 400 of water to take us up to 500. So take the lid off, and then as the 15 minutes comes up, all you do is pour the solution away down the sink. It's all household ingredients, so it should be absolutely fine down any sink. There's no nasty chemicals in there, so 15, stop, reset, and just pour away. And then what you want to do is give it a rinse out with some water, so the, water, the liquid in there starts to run clear. And then the, when the fixer goes in, you want to start the time again and do the same sort of action, but we only do it for five minutes this time. So the fixer goes in, hit start, lid goes on, first 30 seconds. Again, turning the tank a quarter turn every time you invert. And then every 30 seconds you do a couple more inversions. And again, I'll just cut through this so you don't have to sit through me just inverting a film tank. So we're just in the last 30 seconds of the fixer. And we don't have to throw this away because this is good for quite a few films. So we just want to wait until the stopwatch gets to five minutes and then we just tip the fixer back into the jug and then you put, can put it into a, an airtight bottle and it will keep for your next fixing job. That comes out like that. Then the next job is to wash. And with the wash, I tend to just give it one rinse out and then Fill 
the container up just the once and then do 10 inversions which will clear out most of the fix empty that out and then fill it up again and this time we do 20 inversions and that should get most if not all of the fixing solution off the film and diluted enough that it won't have any more effect. Get the water out. And then what I tend to do is just leave the water running through there for a few minutes, for a couple of minutes, just to make sure all the fixer is gone. Once the wash is finished, that you can actually take the lid off. Fill it up again and then add just a couple of drops of dishwasher rinse aid. Give it a good agitation. This just allows the water to run off a bit better. Take it out. And then this is when you see if you've actually got some negatives or not, which I have. So this now needs to just go and hang up to dry. And then in my next video, I'll show you how to scan them. So as you can see, it's possible to develop black and white film with some instant coffee. Well, coffee's a bit of a loose term, but it's possible to do it with just household ingredients and develop your own black and white film. So there's no need to go and get anything too overly complicated. You don't have to mess around with chemicals, store chemicals. You can just have these things on hand and then just make the developer as and when you need it. Okay, you need the fixer, but that stores quite readily in an air cut container and you'll be uh, ready to go next time you have a film process. It is a little bit Heath Robinson at times. It can be a little bit hit and miss, but read that Caffeinol cookbook and you should be good to go. So, if you enjoyed watching this video, hit me a like. If you want to subscribe to see when my next videos are coming out, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.